Now it's time for a showstopper of a dessert, a southern lane cake. Typical to so many southern style desserts, it is on the sweet side. I start with a cup of butter and I'll add to that two cups of sugar. Beat this well. Because of that high ratio of sugar, you can see that it's not light and fluffy, but I know the butter is well beaten within the sugar. Now I have to sift the dry ingredients. Three cups of cake and pastry flour. Cake and pastry flour is designed for cakes. It's got a lower gluten or protein content, and that low gluten means a more tender cake. I'll add two teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. I'll give this a sift. I'll also get my liquids ready. I have a cup of milk, which has been sitting at room temperature. Add to that a teaspoon of vanilla. Now what I'll do is alternate my dry and wet ingredients. And I'll do this on a lower speed. go. Got a nice, pale, light-colored cake batter. You may have noticed there's an ingredient common to cakes I haven't yet added. Eggs. And I will add them, eight egg whites, and I need to whip them until they hold a stiff peak. Add this to the batter in two additions. The first addition is to lighten this cake batter base. And then the second addition, of course, gives it greater volume. Boy, this is a lot of cake batter. The batter is nice and smooth, and I've got three eight-inch round cake pans. The pans have been greased, dusted with flour, and a piece of parchment put on the bottom of each pan to ensure the cakes come out easily. Divide the batter. Lightly tap the batter to get it into the edges of the pan. I've preheated my oven to 350, and the cakes take 30 minutes until they turn a nice golden brown on top. Give it the little skewer test. Yep, comes out clean. Let these cool in their pans for about half an hour, then turn them out onto a cooling rack to cool completely. This is an important step to have the cool cakes ready before you start preparing the filling. I'm starting off with half a cup of unsalted butter, and I want to get that melted first. Add one cup of brown sugar. Before the sugar melts into the butter, I have the eight egg yolks. I use the whites, of course, in the cake batter. Increase the heat to medium. Keep whisking as you're cooking this. It takes about six minutes. So now I'll take it off the heat and I can add my pre-measured ingredients. A cup of lightly toasted pecans, a full cup of raisins, a cup of sweetened flaked coconut, and then, of course, the candied orange peel. I have a half a cup of it diced up. The last ingredient to add, about a teaspoon of vanilla. I've seen some Southern Lane cake recipes call for bourbon, but I find with the candied orange peel, oh, you don't even need it. You've got such beautiful intensity of flavor here. I could just eat spoonfuls of this, but I shouldn't. I shouldn't, I'll share. Okay, now to assemble the cake. I've got my cake wheel and I'll put a cardboard base down. That way I can move the cake around after I've assembled it. Put the first one down. Half of this filling gets spread on top. Oh yes. The second vanilla cake layer on top. Now the remaining half. Mmm, it smells so good. And the final cake layer goes right on top. Now it's time to prepare the meringue frosting. Combine two-thirds of a cup of water with two and a half cups of sugar. And in addition to that, a third of a cup of corn syrup. Bring this up to a boil on high heat using a candy thermometer to measure when it hits 240. Now that the sugar has dissolved and my mixture here has just started boiling, I'm gonna take a spoonful of it, start whipping my two egg whites that are at room temperature, and then slowly pour this in. So that cooks the egg whites, but also helps keep their volume. 
Now I can let this be until it's time to add the hot syrup. All right. Now do take great care. This sugar is very, very, very hot. And what I'm going to do is turn on the mixer, not on high speed, but on medium speed, and I'll pour the hot sugar down the side of the bowl. That way it won't splash hot sugar. Continue beating on high speed until it cools down to just above room temperature. The bowl is still warm to the touch, so I know it hasn't cooled down too much. The last addition, just a splash of vanilla. And right from the mixer onto the cake. I'll put a nice generous layer on the top and then spread it even down to the sides if I can. Try not to lift the spatula too much. Just move the frosting around and letting it hang over the sides makes it easier to put the frosting onto the sides. Gentle fluid motions. Once you feel that the frosting is pulling too much, stop with the swirls, because it is setting up. It takes about an hour to set up fully. That meringue frosting really does set up on the cake. You can see the candied orange peel right there. Mm. 